My name is Joan Kerber Walker, and it's my privilege to work at AZ Bio on behalf of Arizona's bioscience industry. Welcome to AZ Bio's session on learning the request to speak system. So at the Arizona legislature, there are multiple ways that you can engage in the public policy process. Some of those ways include going to the legislature, participating in Day at the Capitol, which is coming up in March, and also letting people know how you feel about specific pieces of legislation that are going through the process. And that is where we use the request to speak system. So I am going to share my screen, and this is going to be a very interactive session. I'm even going to have a little exercise for you to do if you don't already have a profile um, set up on request to speak so that you can use it in the future. So this is the site that you go to for all things related to the Arizona legislature. And you notice at the top where it says azleg.gov. And that is a very important URL to remember. So if you ever want to speak to your specific legislators, you would reach out to them, first initial, last name, at azleg.gov. This is also where we can find all of the information on bills that are going through session and um, take a look at those things. So just to give you an idea, there were over 1,700 bills introduced in January and February. That's a lot of bills. Okay, those are the House bills. These are the Senate bills. And then each one has a drop down. Now, I'd be willing to bet that you don't have time to read 700 bills, 1700 bills. And so one of the things that we do at AZ Bio to make it easier for you is um, we have what we call the AZ Bio watch list. And the AZ Bio watch list is where I have read all 1700 bills. And then from there, um, been able to um, and then from there, been able to go um, and highlight which bills are going to be most impactful on our community. And we have a very broad community, right? Our community includes the hospitals, it includes the patient groups, it includes our health innovators, it includes our universities, it includes our businesses. And so all of the rule, all of the laws that have been proposed, we call them bills, um, are, are then read and the ones that might impact one of our constituencies then is put on the AZ Bio watch list. And you can always find it by going to the advocacy tab and clicking on AZ Bio watch list and it brings it right up, right? So here we are. It also tells us what's happening and when. So at the top of the watch list, you're always going to see what the legislative deadlines are. So let's say that um, AZ Bio wants to propose a piece of legislation at the legislature. In that case, we're going to be talking before session starts with our elected leaders and explaining what the opportunity or the problem is that we want to solve and then working with them and hoping that they will create a piece of legislation that will be reviewed by legislative council or ledged council as we call it, and then introduced during session. So there are specific times when you can do a bill introduction. So um, pre-files are before they actually come into session. And those always have to be done before the first day of the legislative session then additional bills can be brought forward by a member of the legislature. So now you've already done your work and you've got that structure of what they're gonna talk about. Um, that then has to be um, reviewed by legislative council, a package is put together, a folder is created, it is then introduced. So these are the schedules. So you notice that 
on January 16th, if it was a Senate bill, it had to be under, it had to be submitted. By January 29th, it had to be introduced, right? If it had not been introduced at that time, your project is dead for this year, okay? Moving forward, the House also has their own schedules because each chamber is independent. And then there is a, the last day to hear bills in committee, which in this case is Friday of this week. That is called crossover day. So any bill that has been assigned to a committee has to be heard in that committee before Friday. And the schedules are all out. So we know what bills are, have either been heard or will be heard um, and what bills are dead. So if you've looked at this page before, you know it's a really long list. So what you see here, these are the bills that are continuing to move. There are some that we really want to see enacted this year. For instance, um, the Arizona Commerce Authority. So the Arizona Commerce Authority is um, a huge resource that we tap into um, at, with AZ Bio and our community, right? We, they, they are responsible for the R&D tax credits, the angel investor tax credits, a lot of the education programs we tap into, helping us set up businesses when we're moving into the state or, or within the state. So that is a resource that is essential to the growth of our industry. Every state agency, and ACA is a public-private agency with the state, um, has to go through a sunset process or review process every X number of years. And this year happens to be the Arizona Commerce Authority's time to be reviewed. So that is one that we definitely are tracking and we want to make sure that it goes through. At this point, it was heard in House Appropriations. It passed. DP means it, it received a due pass recommendation. Let me make that a little bit bigger so you can see that better. We show that it passed committee with 14 yeses, two noes, and one not voting. And its next step is the rules, rules committee where it, they will determine whether it is consistent with our constitution and legally so that it can then move on to be considered by the full house on the floor, okay? When a bill actually moves from committee to the next stage, so it's past rules, then it will go um, onto the floor. It'll go through its caucuses. The Democrats will talk about it. The Republicans will talk about it. And then if they think that they have enough votes, then it will be submitted for a floor vote. And if it passes, it will be transmitted to the other chamber. So you see up here, for Department of Health Services rulemaking, it passed the Government Committee, it passed the Health and Human Services Committee, it passed the Rules Committee, and then it was transmitted to the Senate. After crossover, everything that gets transmitted to the other chamber starts all over again, and you'll start to see um, updates on the AZ Bio watch list of what's happening as it moves in the other chamber. So. Once this process is started, how can you make your voice heard? And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. So when you are on the, on the legislative website, you see across the top, these are really, really helpful tabs. So in the case of each chamber, you will see that you can click on members and you'll see those are all of the members. It shows what their phone number is for their office. It shows what their email is. And you can send them a note and say, I would like to talk to you about this. I'm concerned about this. I like this. So that is one way that you can directly reach out to your members at the legislature. In addition to that, um, you can track a particular bill. So one of the bills that's very important to our bioscience community is Senate Bill 1019. And that's the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund, which you guys have heard me talk about lots of times. 
so in the case of this bill, it is appropriating $5 million to the um, treasurer's office to put into the trust fund. Right now, there's only $100,000 100, in there. And we have a goal to get to $200 million. So this is a very tight budget year. And so um, our bill sponsor, Senator Show, who is also president pro tem of the Senate, um, recommended that you know we go at a low number because of the state's budget challenges and then has been our champion moving this bill through the process. Senator Shope is joined um, by additional members of the Senate and the House that are also supporting the bill. So you see co-sponsors, so Senator Marsh, um, Senator Cook, Representatives Pollock, Representative Tresh, they are also expressing their support, saying this is important. And because there are Republicans and Democrats, we would say that this bill has bipartisan support. So as you've seen on the AZ Bio website, as we go, as the bill moves through the process, I've used requests to speak to say, I would like to speak in committee. Many others have used requests to speak to show um, their support, even if they're not going to speak in committee. So here you can see people who have used the request to speak system. And you can see that there are 41 people that have signed in either as an organization. Organizations are usually as you in all caps, right? You see Arizona Bio Industry Association. Tom Dorn is our lobbyist. Tom can sign in on behalf of AZ Bio for all of AZ Bio. When I sign in, because I'm not a lobbyist, and my guess is most of you are not lobbyists, okay, you're going to sign in as self. So you can see, you know, people like Kristen Swingle, um, who has signed in, or Dylan, who has signed in as self. And then Throughout the session, the legislators can look at this and see what organizations and what individuals support this legislation, right? In this case, funding for the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund. You can also see people that don't like it. And by the way, as you can see, in this case, there's a lot more people that don't like it than people that have signed in that do like it. Even though if you look at the number of people represented by these organizations, it's actually in the thousands. These are all self. When we see something like this, what it's telling us is that usually there is an organization or a group that looks at pieces of legislation and then as a group, will sign in and say, I like this or I don't like this. In the case of the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund, um, looking at you know, the people that have signed in here, there are, are groups that don't believe in using Arizona tax money um, for special purposes like this. And so what you see here is where a group like that has come together and said, okay, well, we don't wanna spend money on, on these types of things. So we're all gonna sign in against it. And if you look at the day, right, you can see they had a meeting right around the 15th of January and then they all started signing in. So one of the things that's really important is that if we as a community don't sign in, if we don't express when we want to support or are concerned about something as individuals, okay? Then it's very easy for the other side to say, well, I'm gonna vote against this bill because look at all these people that are against it. So that is one of the reasons why using the request to speak system is so important. Now, just to give you an idea, you see all these people that are signed in in the committees that this bill went through, which were the Health Human Services and the Appropriations Committee, only one person actually spoke in committee. 
And in this case, it was me. The rest of the people all use the request to speak system to show their support or their concern. So your ability to sign in as a private individual um, and express what you think is important on, on particular bills really can make a difference. Now, if you talk to legislators, some say, oh, I don't look at that. Others look at it a lot. But if it's a bill that might be controversial, let's say it's a vaccine bill or an education bill or a funding bill, having a, a show of support on request to speak makes those people that are working with you to, to try and make that happen, it gives them cover. It shows that they are working to help a large group of people, not just one person. And so the request to speak pro process is your way of showing support. And once you get signed up for request to speak, you never have to sign up again. It's a one-time thing. And then once you do that, the rest of the time, you can look at bills, you can get an email from someone who says, look at a bill, and then from your desktop, you can sign in and show how you feel about it. If you do want to go to the legislature and speak, you have to use the system to actually make the request to be, to, to be heard in committee. All right, so let's go back to the main screen. And we're going to have some fun. So this is your opportunity, if you do not already have a log on on request to speak, to set one up. And what we're going to do, remember, just because you have a log on doesn't mean you ever have to use it. But it's nice to have it in case you want to at some point in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you now to um, shrink this so that you're going to a smaller screen, maybe half and half, and go and open a second window on your computer and go to azleg.gov. Okay. So your first step is you come over to legislative information and click on request to speak. Now, as you can see, I'm not signed on yet. In this section, even if you're not signed on, you can see what the committees are, what their agendas have been, when they're meeting, et cetera, okay? But in order to actually be able to, show, to do the things we're gonna be talking about, you need to sign on. So we're gonna click on sign on, and we're gonna create an account. Now, as you saw, I already have an account. So this time, we're going to be creating an account um, for someone who does not have an account. So the first thing you're going to do, and you just follow along with me, is we're going to create an account. So you put in an email address. My recommendation is you use your personal email address. Company email addresses sign, change from time to time, and you don't want to have to go through this process again. So use your personal Gmail or Yahoo or whatever you use um, to, to use your personal email address. Because mine is in the system, um, I am going to use a different Gmail address. And this one is going to be, uh, let's see here. Okay, so, so Tucker is going to sign on, and because Tucker is not going to be able to sign on personally at the legislature, um, he needs assistance, because in Tucker's case, um, he, he's not able to go to the legislature, so he may need some help. If you need assistance, it's good to use a password that is not your bank password or your private password. Come up with a password that's simple. So for Tucker, 
we're going to create a password, which is two capital X by 2033. And Tucker's password, you might like Tucker's password if you're going to need help at the legislature too in getting signed up. And again, Tucker's password is 2 X capital X, lowercase b y, 2033. So we're creating an account for Tucker. And Tucker is Tucker Walker. So you're putting in your name. And we're going to create an account. So Tucker Walker now has an account. These first steps allow um, for the next step, which is to go in and, and, off, and activate this at the Capitol. Now, in Tucker's case, um, Tucker wants to also have his profile set up. So he, he clicked on Tucker Account Management. And in this area, you can reset your password. You also have the ability to update personal information. And I strongly recommend that you do this. Um, because if someone wants to know who you are, it just tells, you, tells them a little bit more. So in Tucker's case, Tucker is an individual. So he doesn't have an agency or organization. And poor Tucker, he is not an Arizona registered voter. Because just between you and me, Tucker's a dog. So when we requested Tucker speaks, he barks. So he can't go to the Capitol. Um, and this particular profile that we're setting up will be deleted after this training session. Um, so, but Tucker's not a registered voter. But you probably are. So you would click on yes. And then it will ask you for your voter registration information. Um, so that they can verify that you are a registered voter. The value of that is a lot of times there's bogus accounts in the request to speak system. And so a legislator can go and look at profiles and see if somebody is really a registered voter or not. So if you are a registered voter, this is a very good thing to do. Now, as we said, Tucker's a dog. Tucker is not a registered voter. Now, you are not lobbyists. Lobbyists are registered with the state of Arizona. They have specific reporting or um, responsibilities, and that is not you. So are you a lobbyist? No. Okay. If you are on this call or watching this later and you are a lobbyist, you know what you have to do. Um, so just to, to keep it up. So you put your profile together. You now are in the request to speak system. So Tucker has a profile. He wants to go and speak on a bill. Well, as you can see here, there are different bills moving through committee. Now, you can only ask to speak on a bill when it's in committee or before, or when it's scheduled to be in committee. You can't request to speak on a bill. You can, you can support or object to a bill online, but you can't request to actually speak in committee until that bill has been scheduled, okay? So in this case, let's say that I wanted to um, be a, speak on the Health and Human Services Committee. So Tucker wants to speak. Tucker then comes in and says, okay, I want to um, share my views on the Rare Disease Advisory Council. And I click on that and it shows me what's done. Okay. So that builds up in committee today. They're going to be talking about it. And Tucker says, I want to speak on this bill. So he goes over to applications, request to speak. New request. 
and it says, oops, Tucker, your account is not RTS enabled. That's because Tucker has not gone and signed in at the Capitol uh, at the kiosk. There are two places that you can go to do this. Okay. One is at the state Capitol. There are kiosks in both the House and the Senate buildings. Or if you live in Tucson um, or Southern Arizona, you can go to the Secretary of State's office on Congress Street, and they have a kiosk there. There are lots of reasons why people cannot get to those two locations. Um, AZ Bio has the ability to help people that are not able to go to the legislature or to the Secretary of State's office in Tucson. Um, and if you need assistance, um, contact your AZ Bio, the AZ Bio office, and we'll be able to help you, assist you with that. Everybody that's on this call has the, or on this session today, has the ability to get assistance, um, but you have to go through those first steps, just like Tucker did. Okay, because Tucker um, it doesn't have access to the rest of the functionality. Um, we're going to we're going to log Tucker off. So Tucker is going to sign out. And I am going to sign in. Okay, so now Tucker's gone, I'm back, and we can now start to look at the request to speak system for one that for an account that's active, right? That's doing various things. So here you see these are bills that I personally, not easy bio, I personally read, researched, and supported um, during session. Okay, um, there you see the appropriation for the Arizona Health Innovation Trust Fund. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, you know, that is where I've actually gone in. So if I wanted to speak on a particular bill, I would look at what's coming up right now. And the way I do it is I actually track my bills, right? So you can see those are bills I spoke on. These are bills that I'm tracking. And I can at any time update my position or I can take it off. So the reason for that is that sometimes bills go away. For instance, House Bill 2075 didn't get a hearing this session. So that is what we call a dead bill. So it's going to go away. Um, but sometimes it could become what's called a strike everything bill or a striker. That's where a bill that was introduced, they take everything off and they put something new on. Well, that something new on might be something I don't have anything to do with. And so I would then delete my, my opinion on that bill because it doesn't reference that bill anymore. Now, remember I told you that you can only put in, you can only request to actually speak in committee if that bill is moving through session. But you can actually share at any time your thoughts on a bill. So as we go through the process, you're going to be looking at, you know, different bills that you're supporting or concerned about, and then stating your opinion. So if we look at remember we go to advocacy watch list. Where's that Arizona Commerce Authority bill? We want to make sure that that one passes, right? There it is. House Bill 2417, right? So you can find it on the AZ Bio system. You just go to the watch list. There's the bill number. If you click on it, it's going to take you right to that bill. 
right? It's telling me that I'm signed in as Joan Kerber Walker. Um, and I want to take a build position on that. So I am going to go over to applications, request to speak, my bill positions, and then I'm going to put in House Bill 2417, and it confirms this is the right bill. And I'm going to say, because right, it's not there right now. I'm going to say I'm for this bill. And I'm going to click add. There it is. So now if we go back and we look at that bill, You can see on current bill positions that I'm now signed in. And it's alphabetical by last name, so I'm going to be way down there. Um, but that is how the process works. And that is, see how easy that is? That is something that you can go and click and sign in in support of any particular bill. And as you can see, you know, different organizations are, in, are there as well as lots of individuals. And look at that, Mary Laura already signed in on the 15th. Good job. All right, so that is how we go through the process and, and use the request to speak system. So again, I want to um, just give you guys the opportunity um, at this point to open it up to see if you have any questions. Hey, I have a question. Yes. When you mentioned that if a bill changes and it may not have anything to do with you anymore, you can go in and delete your position. Mm -hmm. um, how does it tell you somehow that a bill you've made a position on has changed or is that your no, responsibility? It, it does not. Okay. So um, you can set in the system um, priorities. So let's go back. Um, it's not going to send you an email and say, hey, it changed, but it will send you an alert. See up here where there's alerts. So this is all of the different bills that I've been tracking and how they've been moving and you would see an alert. Now, another easy way to know is you all get the easy bio in the loop every Monday morning. On the AZ Bio in the Loop, there is the government affairs section, and there's the link that says check the AZ Bio watch list. So to give you an idea, because there is one that now has a strike everything, let me get down to that one. You'll see, again, remember we looked at it, this is moving, it's past the floor, it's going to the next area. And you see how it says do, DPA, that's do pass with an amendment, do pass. Um, where is that one? We just had the first strike, everything came up this morning, right here. So mental health conditions, medications, prohibitions. So you can see where I have actually marked it. You know, it was in health and human services, do pass slash SE. That means strike everything. So there is a strike everything on that bill. And its next step is to go to house rules. So you can click on the link. It's going to take you to the bill. And you can see how it changed. So the way to see how it changes, you click on documents. And because I'm already signed in, I can actually put that on my personal progress list so that it tracks and it gives me those alerts. And I would just say, select the list. I have a 2024 list in this case. And then send to list. 
and it puts it on my tracking. So I'll get alerts when I'm logged in the system. Um, but relative to the bill itself, I want to see what they actually did. So now you see, as you come down here, these are the documents. So this is the first bill as introduced. This is the summary. So the summary is um, set up by legislative council and it explains to you what the bill says, what it's for, why it happens, what it changes. Here with the strike everything, you can actually look at what the new bill says. Now in this case, the new bill actually is very similar to the old bill. They just fixed some things. So they re they just cleared it off and started over. Okay. So this is not a bad strike everything. Um, sometimes you get surprises in strike everything. Um, so in this case, right, that is what they have. You can look at it as a PDF, as a word. You can download it. You can save it, et cetera. Um, and then it will continue to move through the system. So that's how a strike everything works. Now, sometimes it's really hard to figure out where those strike everythings are popping up. And so then when we're looking at bills on the main website, see where it says strike everything? You click on strike everything and it'll show you different bills that now have strike everything's on them and what committee they're in. So remember, there were over 1,700 bills. There's going to be a good number of strike everythings as we go through the rest of session. What we look at is what are the committees that are most likely going to be relative to us, like Health and Human Services, um, Military and Public Affairs, which is very important with our veterans bills, Appropriations, right? Where's the money going? So that's where you'll see the strike everythings. You probably don't have time to go and look at every strike, everything, but Dorn Policy Group is looking at them for AZ Bio. I'm looking at them for AZ Bio. And if it's a strike, anything, everything that affects our industry, then it will be on the AZ Bio watch list. As you go through this process, a couple of things that are really important. So, as an individual, okay, we all have the opportunity to use request to speak as an individual. There are some companies, agencies, organizations that may have internal rules relative to employees. Okay, So it is important that you understand where you work and what those rules are. Most organizations are not going to object to their companies um, or to their employees participating in the process as individuals, right? If you're not a lobbyist, you never, rec you never, you know, say I'm speaking on behalf of AZ Bio or I'm speaking on behalf of the University of Arizona or AZ or or a company, right? Only lobbyists do that, or people that are are authorized to speak, and so. As you go through that process, um, you know, you have the ability to do that. But check if check with your employer to make sure there are not any special rules. There are some of us that sign in as self, but the reality is, is everybody knows that Joan works for AZ Bio, right? If you're one of the thousands of employees at the University of Arizona, Everybody may not know that you work for the University of Arizona. So there's a big difference between when I sign in on a bill as self and when an individual signs in as self, um, because most of you have the luxury of being more anonymous on, on some of these issues, whereas you know some of us are, are a little more um, visible at the legislature. So those are things you have to consider and think about. Um, but it's always good if you, especially if you work for a large organization, that you just check with your boss and make sure that it's not a problem. Everyone has an opportunity to make their voice heard at the legislature. 
it's not as easy at the federal level, right? There's not a request to speak system um, in Congress. So in Congress, that's where you have to be reaching out to your legislate, legislative districts at home. That's where you can participate when we do webinars with members of Congress. Or if you're able, you know, when I'm going to Congress, you can go with me and we'll visit all of the offices in a couple of days. And so those are ways that you can get involved at the federal level. But request to speak is a really easy and effective way for you to be involved at the state level in shaping the policy that impacts your business.